Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hello and welcome to Postscript. My name is Adam McIntyre and I'm joined today by Pastor Dan Slagle, who just preached a sermon answering the question, why do we read the Bible? Dan, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thanks for having me. So the first question, we're just going to jump right in. Uh, this person wrote in, wanted to know, what do you think is, well, they wanted to know, what is the most accurate translation? But that can have a, a lot of different answers. So if you want to try to answer that, uh, or if you want to answer, what are some of your favorites? What are some to avoid, if you know of any? Sure. Well, I think it's helpful to point out that, generally speaking, there are two different types of translations out there. There is more of your word-for-word, -word, sort of taking from the original languages and making as close a translation as you can. Right. And then there are what are called dynamic translations, which try to capture the, the gist or right. the spirit. Uh, examples of the former would be the NIV or the NASB or the ESV. Uh, examples of the latter would be um, the Living Translation, the New Living Translation. The message probably is a hybrid of, I mean, Dr. Peterson's a smart guy, but uh, I'm willing to bet there's enough dynamism in there. Um, for my own personal reading, uh, I read out of the NIV, but not because I think it's superior to the others. It's just the one that I've read. Right. Yeah. So a lot of times it's it's one that you uh, have a, a certain familiar, familiarity yeah. with and yeah, you're comfortable exactly. with it and, and things like that. Yeah. And, uh, and so another person wrote in um, referring to your 2 Timothy uh, 3, 16 through 17 passage that you use. Um, and in that passage, Paul tells Timothy that all scripture is God-breathed. Right. Um, and, uh, and then a lot of times we as Christians now use that to talk about how the New Testament um, is also mm -hmm. God-breathed, it's inspired. Mm -hmm. um, however, at the time that Paul was writing this to Timothy, there was no such thing as the New Testament yet. Right. Um, so this person wrote in and said, surely Paul didn't mean the New Testament. Um, so how can we read Paul's words that he wrote to Timothy and still know that it applies to the New Testament as well as the Old Testament. Right. Well, I, I would agree that he was not referring to the New Testament specifically when he wrote those words. It, right. it didn't exist. Right. But he was referring, I think, to all writings that were deemed Scripture and would be mm -hmm. deemed Scripture, th though he himself had no idea that... Sure his writings would fall into that category. Right. I think you need to step back from the immediate context that he's writing in and sort of look at the uh, span of time uh, involving what's called the canonization of the Bible, the, the selection of the books that would eventually become our Bible. And when you can sort of step back and, and see the whole process, which was quite a lengthy one, yeah, involving yes. a lot of argument and a lot of prayer, it, uh, I think, doesn't seem so far-fetched that something Paul uh, wrote at a specific point in time would later be considered a part of the canon. Right. If you can look at it that way, I, I think it's perfectly legitimate. Sure, absolutely. And then, um, if you would, I would like for you to, uh, to kind of go into the role of the Holy Spirit. Um, and you talked about how Scripture is... Um, there to transform us and to mm -hmm. conform us into the likeness of, of Christ. And so someone wrote in and asked, well, what is the role of the Holy Spirit in that transformation, in, that, um, in the conformity into right. our, to, to likeness of Christ? Right. Well, Jesus was clear that the Holy Spirit would be our teacher when it came to Scripture. He would be the one who would guide us into all truth. And He is the one who actually facilitates our sanctification. That, that's part of his role as the third member of the Trinity. So when I said in the sermon, I can't give you the precise mechanics uh, of what happened in my transformation, I was not uh, thereby excluding the role or the work of the Holy Spirit. Right. I was simply uh, speaking to the fact that at one point in time, I had one set of priorities right. and a few months later, a very different. Mm -hmm. Even if I limited 
my uh, sermon to the work of the Holy Spirit, I still couldn't tell you exactly how he sure. does it. Yeah. You know, there, there is mystery to that. Absolutely. But without question, he, he is involved absolutely in a central way right. in every person's transformation. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, John Calvin says, you know, uh, without the Spirit, the Word can do nothing. Yeah. Uh, we, the, it's just words on a page at that point without the power of the Spirit yep. to transform and, and even our own faith is a gift sure. of the Spirit. Um, I'll even so, go with Calvin on that one. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Well, Pastor Dan, thank you so much uh, for being here. And thank you all for tuning in. We will see you all next time. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org slash postscript.